Um, so one of the products out there is Google Nest. Um, and there was an article uh, from someone that reverse engineered Google Nest devices to see what's going on with those. Um, so I'm a bit of a skeptic when it comes to home automation and connections <coughs> on the internet. There's always like that security breach risk and stuff like that. So um, when they looked into uh, looked into it, basically some of the first concerns they had is that you have to have an internet connection to manage the devices. So they tested specifically the Google camera, or Nest camera and uh, the thermostat. Um, and so you have to have an internet connection to manage them. There's no like local port access um, to the devices. All communication occurs uh, through internet ports, basically. So uh, it goes straight to um, Google servers. Uh, well, they own the servers. There's a particular one they use, but anyway. Um, and then the devices are constantly streaming data. Uh, so unless you disconnect them from the network, which basically makes them useless at that point, um, then they're always streaming data to the server. So uh, like your the camera is constantly streaming that, that video up or the uh, thermostats, you know, sending data to the server. And that's good and bad in some ways. So like uh, the good part is it's accessible. So if you're away from your home, you know, you can see what's going on at your house. Uh, but then it also puts all that video and the gene online. So it makes it security breach accessible. Um, and then the other part is like, if you don't have an internet connection, then you can't uh, see manage the thermostat. For example, if you want to change your temperature in your house and your internet's down for some reason, <laughs> you're out of luck. <laughs> so um, it's definitely a disadvantage. And then, um, he uh, set up a packet capture, so uh, which puts up a phony SSL and is able to read secure socket uh, communications, so like secure communications to the server. And uh, the password for that is actually transmitted in plain text. Hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so basically, if anybody set up the same sort of uh, configuration, they could get your password to your account and uh, gain access to all your devices. <laughs> um, and then there's also limited access for users to the data that goes uh, to the API. The one that he seemed most concerned with was uh, the current temperature of the house. Um, you can't actually access that data. There's a whole bunch of other information you can get, but uh, you can't access your current current temperature. So if you wanted to like automate something based upon that yourself, you can gain access to it. So. Uh, his hope is that um, that access will be um, basically more open um, and users will be able to access their own data. And I'm guessing also more secure too <laughs> by not, uh, or by encrypting the password <coughs> as it's transmitted. Just to have one minute, one minute 15. Does anybody want to react about it? So I was curious about the password. Is that password just to the mess or is that like, like, is my refrigerator going to leak my Gmail password? Is that the password yeah. all that you depends on you largely. So, yeah. not like, one. <laughs> right. So, if you use the same password across multiple <laughs> accounts, which um, people do, so uh, then yes, that could mean your Gmail account gets hacked, and people will test that sort of thing. So, I'd like to also add that there are certain smart TVs uh, also. They also have the same like kind of security risk. You know, they they can record you know your voice and. Actually, I read something quite disturbing just today. Um, so port uh, f uh, 554, I think, um, streams, uh, a real-time, I think, streaming protocol is what the, it is. And um, for baby monitors, no, yeah. there's actually a search engine oh, yeah. that randomly searches it. And because baby monitors don't have any authentication, there's no password. Yeah. So they have a search engine where it'll live stream like yeah. different houses where baby monitors are on. <laughs> so, that's super crazy. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah I heard I, I heard about a guy um, breaking into that and talking to the toddler. Yeah, he was talking to the toddler. <laughs> and he was like, oh my God. he kept he was waking creep. up children mm -hmm. yeah, and freaking them out. At night. <laughs> <laughs> He'd wake up like it's terrifying, morning. but it's yeah. hilarious. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, I mean, because it's, it's horrible. It is horrible, but it's <laughs> pretty, pretty, it's pretty disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we have like 10 seconds left, whatever. If you want to carry on the conversation, as a reminder, you are very welcome to do that in the break room.
so that everybody can everybody <laughs> else can carry on with their projects. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.